Okay, so last lecture was all about the theoretical step and the fundamental knowledge about Apache Spark streaming. So in this lecture, we are going to build our own Spark streaming application which processes the data coming from socket connection and also we'll learn about Spark streaming query and different parameters that goes into it. So without further any ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started with building and running our first Spark streaming application. This will be very fun and we are going to build our own Spark application which can listen to any port and counts the data which is published to it every second and it will give us the aggregated output. So without further any ado, let's jump onto it. So here we will cover some the high level concept that you need to understand for developing your Spark streaming queries. So we will first walk through like the key steps for defining and starting the streaming query. And we will discuss how we can monitor the query afterwards in the next lecture. So there are the 5 step process for defining the streaming query and I have given this all here. So structure streaming uses the same data frame API as the batch queries for expressing the data processing logic. But there are a few key differences we need to understand first to know about for defining structured streaming query. So let's explore these steps one by one and build our own application. So the first one is we have to define the sources. So as with the batch queries, the first step will be define a data frame from a streaming source. So once you import all the packages which are needed, first you will build your Spark session and then you have to define your input source. So when reading the batch data sources, we usually use the spark.read for creating a data frame reader. But in the streaming source, we need spark.read stream instead of sparks.read which we have used in the batch mode for creating data stream reader. So this data stream reader has most of the same method as we have in the data frame reader. So we can use it in a similar way. So and the programming semantics will be also similar. So you will not struggle as an entry level spark streaming developer. So let's take an example of creating a data frame from a text data stream and it will be receiving from a socket connection. So let's jump on to the coding part. Okay, so as you can see, this is our script. So first we have imported all the packages and created the Spark session. It is a simple process. We have used the builder method again and given the app name as Spark stream because it makes sense. And we have used the get or create for getting the already created session or create a new one for us. And here we have defined the sources. So this code will generate like a lines data frame as like an unbounded table which you have seen in the previous lecture. So it will also act as like a relational database table and it will receive the data from local host and the port name is 9999. So it will listen to this port and get the lines of data stream on that port. So you have to note that similar to batch sources with spark.read this does not immediately start reading the streaming data. It only sets the configuration which are necessary for reading the data once this streaming query is explicitly started. So besides sockets, this Apache Spark will support reading data stream from Apache Kafka and all other various file based formats that this data frame reader supports. So data frame reader supports like Parquet, ORC, JSON, this type of format which we have already seen. And also you have to note that a streaming query can also define multiple input sources. So it will also define like a streaming source as well as the batch source which can be combined using data frame operations like unions as well as the joins. We will also discuss this in our upcoming lectures. Okay, so once we define the input sources, the next step would be like transforming that data which we receive from that socket connection. So we will apply some usual data frame operation such as like splitting the lines into individual words and then counting them to get the aggregated output. Let's jump on to code and let's see what we have done. Okay, so after defining the input sources in this block, the next one we will transform the data. So these words are nothing but like we have used the split function to split our lines into the words and then after that we will count those words to get the aggregations. So what we have done is we have the lines data frames. It will just only use the split function to extract the words from this lines data frame. So the data which will receive from the socket connection on our port, which is 9999, it will get split up into words and then it will do the count operation. That is the next step. So these counts are nothing but we have done the group by operation on the words data frame and use the count function 
to get the aggregated output. So the operation can be applied on a batch data frame can also be applied on a streaming data frame. So for understanding the operation, there are two broad classes of data transformation. The first one is a stateless transformation and the second one is a stateful transformation. So the operations like select operation, filter, map, this do not require any transformation from previous rows for processing the next row. So each row can be processed by itself. So the lack of previous state of this transformation make them a stateless. And this stateless operation can be applied to both batch and the streaming data frame. And if we talk about the stateful transformation. So in opposed to that, the aggregation operations like count will require maintaining the state of the combined data across the multiple rows. So more specifically like data frame operation involves groupings, then joinings or aggregation functions as stateful operations or transformations. So while many of these operations are supported in structured streaming, few combination of them are not supported because it is either computationally hard or it is like infeasible for computing them in an incremental manner. So the stateful operations supported by Spark streaming and how we can manage them that we can also discuss in depth in upcoming lecture. But after that, let's jump on to our third step, which is like defining the output sync and the output mode. So let's jump on to that. So the step three is like defining output sync and the output mode. So after transforming the data, we can define how we can write this process data with write stream method of the data frame. So instead of data frame dot write, which is used for batch data, we will use write stream. So this will create a data frame stream writer in which similar, which is similar to like data frame writer has an additional method for specifying some condition like the output writing details where and how we can write the output as well as the processing details in which we will define like how to process data and how to recover from the failures. That is very important part of the spark streaming application and why that we are also going to see in depth. So let's start with the output writing details. So we will focus on the processing details. So for example, let's jump onto the code and see the final counts on the console. So in our next phase, we have defined the checkpoint directory. That is very important and why that we are going to see. But first, as you can see, we have specified the console as the output streaming sync and the complete as the output mode. So as you can see, it is defined by the format and output mode methods. See the output mode of the streaming query will specify what part of the updated output to write out after processing the new input data. So in this example, as the chunk of new input data is processed and the word counts are updated, we can choose to print the console either to count all of the words seen until now or only those words that were updated in the last chunks of input data. So this is decided by the specified output mode. So here we have defined the complete output mode and also there are other modes like append mode and the update mode. So let's discuss about them. So first one is append mode. So in the append mode, which is like a default mode where only the new rows are only added to the result table since like the last trigger will be output to the sync. So semantically, this mode will guarantee that any row that is output is never going to be changed or updated by the query in future. So hence append mode is support supported by only those queries that will never modify previously output data. And in contrast, our word count query can update previously generated counts. Therefore, it does not support the append mode. So that's why we have used the complete mode. So in the complete mode, all the rows of the result table will be output at the end of every trigger. This is supported by the queries where the result table is likely to be much smaller than the input data and therefore it can be feasible for retaining the in memory. So for example, our work count queries will support complete mode because the counts data is likely to be far smaller than the input data. So that is why we have used the complete mode here, but we also have the update mode. So in this mode, we will the only rows of the result table or the data frame that are updated since the last trigger will be output at the end of every trigger. So this is in contrast with the append mode as the output rows may be modified by the query and output again in the future. So most of the queries will support the update mode as well. But in this example, let's stick to the complete mode only. 
and also in the next step we'll have to specify the processing details so in the processing details which is like a final step before starting the query is nothing but to specify the details of how to process the data so we will continue with the word count example we have specified the processing detail as given here so here we have specified two types of details using the data stream writer that we created with write stream method there are two major types of the details the one is like a triggering detail which indicates when to trigger the discovery and processing of the newly available data so there are four option in that the first one is the default so when the trigger is not explicitly specified then by default the streaming query will execute the data in micro batches where the next micro batch is triggered as soon as the previous micro batch has completed so this is like a default mode so the next one is processing time with a trigger interval so as we can see we have given the trigger and also defined the processing time here so we can explicitly specify the processing time trigger with an interval and the query will trigger micro batches at the fixed interval so we have defined the one second interval for processing time so that will vary application to the application and it totally depends on what type of data you are handling the volume of the data and what is your end goal and after that we have also defined the checkpoint location which is like a second detail which we have given so this is like a directory in either sdfs compatible file system so it could be sdfs so it is the location where a streaming query saves its progress information so here we have given it the checkpoint directory in the c drive of our local system since we are running spar in our local system only so it will have the information like what data has been successfully processed and upon failure this metadata will be used for restarting the failed query exactly where it left off therefore setting this option is very necessary for failure recovery with exactly once guarantees so we have defined the checkpoint directory and also given the option of checkpoint location and provided the checkpoint directory there and we have just used the start method for starting our spark streaming job so this is very simple and i know that some of the options are pretty new to you and not familiar and we haven't used that and not available in our batch query so once you got to practice and also learn on your own you will get to know and understand these details so that you will get a good grip on apache spark streaming but first since we are listening to this port 9999 we have to make the connection to this port first and there is a tool of ncat which enable this port and publish some data to it so that spark will listens to that port and then grabs the data from there and processes it in real time of one second window that we have provided in our application so let's jump on to installing ncat in your windows system so as you can see i have given the ncat tool setup link here so i'll just click on that and let's see where it goes so it will just downloading the file so it's a pretty small file only 27 mbs okay so our installation is completed so just open that file then give like i agree then you have to go to next then you have to go install or if you want to specify some specific destination folder that is totally fine so just click on install so since i have already installed it i'll just click on yes for installing it so i'll just give i agree and give the default ones install and it will take like couple of minutes to set up and there you go the installation is completed so click on next and click on finish that's it that is all you have to do for installing the ncat so we are just good to go to kick off our spark streaming job and also publish some data through our socket connection and get the aggregated results of count of words we are submitting through that console so are you ready let's go then okay so i hope you understood this code we have after importing all the packages we have just created our spark session then we have imported the define the input sources where we have defined the socket connection to the port 9999 and after that we have transform our data in this step and after that defining the checkpoint directory we have defined like the output mode as well as the format which is to the console and the trigger in which we have defined the processing time of every second and also we have given the checkpoint directory for the failure recovery of our application so we are ready to go so the first step would be we have to make this socket connection live so to do that just go to the windows and open a command prompt window 
So in command prompt, all you have to do is you have to submit a command like ncat space hyphen l and the port number on which you want to make a connection. So the port number in which in our case is 9999. That's it. Hit enter. And there you go. You have set up the connection to this port. So once you submit the data into it, the spark stream will listen to that data and then will get the aggregated output. So all you have to do is you have to kick off our spark streaming application. Okay. So just kick off our job. So it will listen to that data for every second in our socket connection. So as you can see, our job has been finally started and listening to our socket connection for every second, but we haven't inserted any data into it. So it will not give us anything. So let's check on that now. So it will just completing its transformation and all. As you can see, we haven't got any words and the count. So it is like zero. Okay. So we will just submit some data in this port connection. So all we can do is we are learning PySpark. Okay. So we got some data and it is now processing it. So let's see what it gives us. And there you have it. We got the V output or, and we have got the count as well. Let's see if we get the other data as well. And yes, we got all the data. So here we have we are learning spark. That's it. So once you start submitting the data, it will just split those lines into words and then give us the aggregated output. So we are enjoying the learning. That's it. So once you submit the data and there you go, we also got the result. But here, since we have given the space, it is only giving the V and comma as well. So we'll just again try to submit it some words and let's wait for it to complete. And there you go. We got the V word, which appeared four times here. So this V is with the comma. That's why it's given the separate result. But I hope you understood what we are doing here. We are just publishing the data through the socket connection using the netcat to the port 9999. And then Spark is consuming that data, converting it into words and giving us the count of all the words which is having. So we have submitted the learning twice enjoying once and all the words which means that it is giving us the expected output so i hope you understood it and enjoyed it and i have giving you the link for installation the ncat as well as this sparkstreaming.py file to you so that you can get your hands dirty and build your own spark streaming application you can listen to anything you can listen to kafka as a source and you will sync the data to the console or either the file location that you need but make sure to give the checkpoint directory because it is very important for failure recovery. So I hope you got all the understanding here about PySpark streaming. But in the upcoming lectures, we are going to see what is happening under the hood when we submit this job. Because this lecture was all about getting our hands dirty and see some output because that is the most important part. And it will make a lot out of it when you start working it in the actual environment. So that's all for this lecture and let's discuss about some theoretical stuff of how it is working under the hood in the next lecture. I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media, which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.